In the last lecture, we completed the implementation of Authorized Guard, which we are going to use to protect the resources from unauthorized access. Now, currently, we are seeing an error in the terminal. So if you see, while building our NestJS application, the NestJS is complaining about this error and it says it can't resolve dependencies of Authorized Guard. Basically, in the Authorized Guard class, we are using the auth config. And that auth config, if you see, this auth config, it is not a global config file. It is a module specific config file. It is specific to this auth module. And the auth guard has a dependency. So if you see in this auth guard, we are injecting an instance of this auth config. So it has a dependency on this auth config. And since we are using this authorized guard, in the user controller we are using it on two endpoints on this get user by id endpoint and on this get users endpoint so since we are using this authorized guard in the user controller basically in the user module the user module is not aware about this auth config file about this file so what we need to do is we need to make this user module aware about that auth config file and to do that, all we have to do is here, let's use config module. And in order to use this config module, we also need to import it from nestjs slash config dot for feature. And to this, we are going to pass the auth config. Okay. And in order to use this auth config, again, we need to import it from this file path. This is the first thing. And the second thing is we are also going to use the JWT module and to use the JWT module we need to import it from nestjs slash JWT on that we are going to call this register async method and to this we are going to specify auth config dot and on this we are going to call as provider method okay so we are configuring we are registering this auth config as provider and now this auth config can be injected anywhere inside this user module also so let's save the changes here and now let's go to the terminal and let's see if we have any error and now you can see the application has been built successfully so to fix that error all we had to do is we have to add this auth config in the user module so that it can be used in the file associated with the user module all right so now since we do not have any error let's go to postman and let's try to test the authorized guard. So in the user module, we have added that authorized guard on two endpoints on this get users endpoint, which is going to return us all the users and on this get user by ID endpoint, which is going to return us a user based on the ID. So let's go to postman. And first I'm going to make a request to this get all users endpoint and here, when I'm making a GET request, I'm not adding any JSON web token to the authorization header of this request. If I send this request, we should be receiving 401 unauthorized response. Okay, so you can see the message is unauthorized. But if I go to GET USER BY ID, when we are going to send this request, with that, I'm attaching a JSON web token in the authorization header of that request. Now, it is possible that this JSON web token might have expired, but before I generate a new JSON web token, let's try with this JSON web token. If I send the request, here also I'm getting this unauthorized response. Why? Because this JSON web token might have expired. And since it is expired, it is not a valid JSON web token. And since it is not a valid JSON web token, we are getting this response 401 unauthorized. So that is correct. Now what I'm going to do is I'll go to this login endpoint and I'll try to log in mark what user again. And if the user is successfully logged in, we will receive a new JSON web token in the response. So let me use this JSON web token. Let's go to this request and there let's add that JSON web token as a bearer token. So here you see auth type I have selected as bearer token and I'm specifying the JSON web token with that bearer token. Now, if I send the request, this user 
the user for which this JWT has been issued, that user should be able to access this route. If I send the request, now you will see that we have the response. So that means with this valid JSON web token, this user has the right to access the protected route. In this case, this route. Okay, so our authorized guard is working as expected. If we don't specify the authorization token with the request or if the token attached to the authorization header is invalid, the user will not be allowed to access the protected route. Only if the attached token is valid, then only the client or the user will be allowed to access the protected route. Now, currently we are adding this authorized guard only on two endpoints in this user controller but in this user controller all the endpoints which we have it should be accessed only by the authenticated user so only an authenticated user should be able to delete his account delete the user only an authenticated user should be able to see the details of a user by its id only an authenticated user should be able to fetch all the users okay so all these endpoints inside this user controller all of them should be protected so what we can do is we can use this authorized guard on all these endpoints or what we can do is i can remove this from here let me also cut it from here and now instead of adding that authorized guard on each and every endpoint inside this controller which i want to protect i can simply go ahead and i can add it on the controller level like this and in this case all the endpoints inside this controller will be protected on all these endpoints this authorized guard will run before providing access to that endpoint to the user and to prove that let me save the changes here Let's go back to the postman and again, let's try to access this endpoint. So this endpoint is also present in the user controller. If I try to access this endpoint in this case, okay, let's try it again. The application might not have been built successfully. So now it is built successfully. Let's try this request again. So we are getting the response because here we have attached a valid JSON web token. Let's go to this request. And here, if I try to access this endpoint, which is again present inside the user controller, here I should not be able to access the endpoint. I should get this unauthorized response, which is correct, because here I have not attached the valid JSON web token with the request. So you see, when I have applied this authorized guard on the controller level, it is getting applied to all the endpoints inside that controller. And let me also show you the payload here. So we use the JWT for mark what? Basically, this JWT, it has been issued for this user with username mark what 12. So when we are logging the payload in this authorized guard, at this line, we are logging the payload. So if we have a look at that payload, you will see that there the sub is 26. This 26 is basically the ID of that user. If I go to PG admin, there you will see that for the username markwat12, the ID is 26. So this sub is storing that user ID. Then the email for that user is mark at gmail.com. And you can also see at what time the token was issued, the timestamp for that the timestamp for when the token will expire, the audience and the issuer. So this is how the payload looks like. And this payload we have attached with request. So on the request, we have created a user property and on that user property, we have assigned that payload. All right, so this is all from this lecture. In the next lecture, we will learn how we can apply a guard globally in our nest.js application so currently we have applied this authorized guard 
only on the endpoints present in this user controller. But let's say I want to apply this authorize guard on all the endpoints in my Nest.js application. How can I do that? That we will learn in our next lecture. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.